All right, guys. So for the last couple of months, I've been trying to uh, trying to find some videos that will pique your guys' interest. So we just broke 53,000 subs, and uh, I have not really been able to find a video the last couple of months that I feel has like piqued your guys' interest, uh, and it shows. So anyway. I was going through the videos from the last couple of years and I noticed that uh, last year I, I made a video on jug fishing and it had quite a little bit of interest. So anyway, we're out here today. It's a nice day, a little windy, and uh, and we're gonna do some jug fishing for you guys. So I left the, the big boat at home, big boats at home with all its fancy electronics and everything. We're out here, bare bones basic. Uh, I'll just kind of give you, give you a little look-see here. This is my bow fishing boat. Uh, I don't have the light rack on it right now because I've been catfishing in the current and uh, you know it just kind of gets in the way. I've got a removable light rack that goes up and around the, the bow of the boat. But anyway, we're uh, we're up here in the little boat. I've got it packed full. I've got a cooler full of beer. I've got a cooler full of shad and an empty cooler full of ice that we're going to hopefully fill up with some catfish. So uh, anyway, I'll get you guys set up and uh, we'll uh, we'll throw out some jugs. Uh, there may be some fish still spawning shallow, so I brought the bows with me. I brought the, the new crossbow thing, so we may shoot some fish too. But we're out here for, for channel cats uh, eating fish, and uh, we'll bring you guys along. So as I said, we're, uh, we're in the old, uh, old beater boat today. No electronics, no nothing on this. So we're going to take the old uh, hook here, and we're going to do a depth check. I've already done this, but we're running, running about five foot deep right in here. And uh, what I want to do is... I want these jugs, I'm gonna throw them against the bank that on the upwind side and I want them to kind of drift across this little cove here. And it's pretty pretty flat. I've checked it across the way there, running about five foot deep. So I've set these jugs to uh, I've set these jugs to four foot, around about four foot, because I don't want this bait dragging. I want it just suspended off of uh, off the bottom. So these are my uh, these are my adjustable jugs here. I can adjust the weight and the depth. Uh, I'm running three ounce weights today because I want them to kind of move. If uh, if this video gets a thousand likes, guys, I'll show you all how to make these these jugs. We've got 53,000 subs. There should be no reason why we can't get a thousand likes. Um, the interest is there, guys. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these jugs and I'm going to chuck them out on the upwind side, pretty close to the bank, and then they're going to drift across the way, and we're going to cover a lot of uh, a lot of water this way. So anyway. We'll fire up this old two-stroke. You guys are gonna have to listen to it because uh, we're not in the big boat. But uh, we'll fire this old two-stroke up, and we'll just kind of run down the bank here, and uh, we'll chuck these jugs out. I've got ten of them baited right now, so we're gonna run this stretch of bank, and then we're gonna move down the ways and and cover a different stretch of bank. But pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Like I said, four foot deep, three eight ounce weights. Uh, if I was wanting to hold them in place, I'd use a bigger weight, but you know, with my system here, I can adjust everything. So anyway, we'll fire this motor up and we'll, uh, we'll go down the way there. You guys will listen to the old two-stroke today. She's 30 years old, but boy, I got her running nice. We'll spin around here. Like I said, this is super easy the way I've got all this set up. I can just chuck all these jugs out real nice and easy. Set them about four foot deep. Throw them out. You guys can see I'm running circle hooks today. A lot of people screw a circle hook up because they don't put enough hook point out. You want enough hook point running through that hook you don't want to cover it up so i'm running about i don't know one inch pieces of bait this is fresh shad i caught just this morning you can see about a one inch piece of bait there just caught it this morning these old two strokes do not like to idle down so i'm running about a one inch piece of bait i mean we're we're fishing for fish you know five to seven pounds guys we're not going after the giant fish uh this jug fishing you know you got to kind of set up for that and that's what i'm here for i'm not here for the, the big giant channels so anyway you guys 
you can see them behind me, I got them spaced out what? 40, 50 foot apart. Keep the old girl wrapped up a little bit. She won't die on me. But that's the bait, guys. Fresh cut shad. Fresh bait is better. I don't care what you say. You catch fish on stink bait all day long, or you can catch fish on uh, fresh cut shad even better. So you can see I'm going to cover a ton of water here by doing this. Just running along through here. These jugs will stand up whenever they get a fish and you'll see them swimming. It was a pretty effective way, really. Do some fishing. And it's fun. It's fun chasing down these jugs. You can either do some rod and reel fishing, set off the bank, drink you a cold beer, watch them for a little bit. It's just a good time. So here's the last one. Here's number 10. Chuck him out. I'll move up the bank a couple hundred yards and we'll hit a new stretch of bank. All right, so I've left those jugs and I've come up in this little creek arm here just to kind of test the depth. This arm is just a little bit shallower. It's running four foot or so, three, four feet. So I, you can tell I shortened up my jugs. That's the beauty of these adjustable ones that I've got is that, that you can adjust them real easy. So anyway, shorten these 10 up. Uh, here on this lake, we have to, you can't leave your jugs unattended. So I just be within sight of everything. Uh, but just trying a little different depth, same way. Little circle hook. Keep everything exposed. Just run up through here. Chuck these guys out. And then uh, then we can either go do something else or, or we wait. But not a lot to it, guys. Pretty, pretty straightforward, really. It can be very productive at times if you can isolate out where the fish are going to be. I mean, you got 20 hooks in the water, right? So, all right, guys. So I went and shot about a half a dozen gar here. Gave myself about a half hour. Come back and look at these, and I see I've got one fish here. So let's roll up and get him. And so my hook was a dollar eighty-eight piece of a. Uh, conduit with a hook on the end of it and let's roll up here and see what we've got he's bobbing I don't think he's huge but you never know it's actually easier <laughs> it's actually easier running these jugs out of this little boat than it is my big boat just because the maneuverability and the fact it's it's closer to water. So we'll just reach out and grab that line. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's bring him in the boat here for you guys. Whew, I just got drenched. All right, so there you go. That right there is exactly what we're after, guys. That is about a five, five pound or so channel. Nice clean fish. That is a perfect, you can see that circle hook. Can you see that circle hook? Just perfect, right in the corner of his mouth. So that right there is gonna go on ice and that's gonna be, it's gonna be a good supper there. So we'll throw him on ice. We'll rebate this guy, chuck him out. And I'm just gonna drive by. I see another one down there that looks like it's moving. Uh, the rest of them are slowly working their way across the flat. And then we'll go have a look at the ones in the creek. All right, so I was just making my way and this is kind of why you guys gotta drive by all these jugs because you know, sometimes them fish will just sit there and that's what this one did. It didn't look like there was a fish on, but as soon as I drove by him, he's, he's pulling the buoy down, so. Uh, 
looks like there might be that one too. That's why you gotta kinda just, just scare him with the boat. So you can see I just got my stick out here and we'll just drive by and hook him. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Oh, oh that gun, come here guy. Hit my power tilt there. That's another good one. Well, size is pretty good today. Size is pretty good today. Like I said, guys, I'm not coming out here trying to catch 10 pounders. Uh, I'm coming out here to catch these guys. And this is what you should be expecting to catch, you know. That's another good three pounder. These suckers will clean up just perfect. So, nice cleaned fish. I'll throw them on the ice. I'll rebate and uh, I'll move on. But that's that's two, two out of ten. So we're doing we're good, doing good. I'm pretty sure one down there's got one because he he went into the shore. So we'll drive by and have another look see. All right, guys. So ooh, we got a fish here. Let's see if I can get him out of the bushes. See if I can get him out of the bushes without him getting off. That's the issue here. <laughs> Woo! About lost him, guys. <laughs> about lost him. There we go. So that's that's the big fish, actually. That right now. Uh, Okay, so that's the big fish right now. That's probably seven pounds, six, seven pounds, something like that. Throw him in there. And I see one more out there is moving around, so we've got another one out there. Let's see here. Another. There we go. So that is about a two pounder. Maybe not quite. Maybe not quite two pounds. He's right at it. This is this right here. Um, this right here, guys, is as small as I'm gonna keep him. So you guys can tell on my arm from my fingertips to my forearm is probably what 18. Well, I can measure him. I got a cooler here. Yeah, it's an 18 inch fish, right? So this is this is as small as I keep him. Anything smaller than this. By the time you cut the red meat and the yellow meat off of them, you just end up with a little bitty fillet and you might as well throw them back. But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's another one. And we're throwing some meat in that cooler now, guys. So, and I got a bunch of gar too. So anyway, I've got one way up in the bushes. I'm gonna probably have to put the camera away to get at him. Uh, so I'll knock him down, but we'll have a look see at him in a second. So this one here has definitely got a fish on it. It was up in the bushes whenever I made my first pass. And now he's out in the middle of the channel. So let's go get him real quick. And then we'll go back and get that one that's deep in the bushes. Let's see here. He was strong enough to pull himself back out, so. Here. Grab him. Alright, so wow that fish swallowed it. Hmm. He really swallowed it. Swallowed that circle hook, guys. He's bleeding pretty severe, but that's a boogered up fish. Look at his tail, guys. Can you guys see that? Well, he's not gonna make it. He's got a circle hook. That circle hook is down in his stomach. So, normally, guys, this would be a fish that I would throw back. Uh, I know a lot of people like them just for the fiddlers and such. But anyway, I'm gonna wrestle this circle hook out of his stomach. That usually does not happen. Uh, that's why I use circle hooks. But you know, whatever. So the average has kind of been all over the place. A little bit less up in this channel. So we'll probably end up moving these back out. 
but let me get this hook dug out of him real quick and uh, let me get this hook dug out of this fish and then uh, we'll get that one of the bushes but no oh, funky look at his tail all right so I am not one so I am not one to leave a jug uh, and the water's only like waist deep so And I think the fish may actually still be on there. So. I'm gonna jump in and see if there is, is a fish in there. Let's see what it is. So the fish is definitely still on here guys. I can feel the fish down there. About a three pounder. Get my hands in his gills. Or he can't get out. I'll take the hook out. He's hooked right in the corner of his mouth, right where he should be. There we go. So that just shows you them circle hooks. So that just shows you them circle hooks. There he is, right there, guys. Now hang on, you can see he's hooked right in the circle, right in the corner of the mouth. I just had to go in after him, but uh, anyway, nothing to it. Now we're now we're noodling. We've shot fish, we jugged fish, and now we're going in after the water. All right, there's our fish. <laughs> there's our fish. That's I mean that's 22 inch fish. 23, 23 inch fish, right? It's a good eater. Nothing wrong with that fish. All right, let's throw them in the cooler there. That's what, one, two, three. If we count the one that got away, which was hooked, uh, that's seven. Seven on the first go around. Uh, I'll live with that. Coming up to this, uh, coming out of the creek arm there. We got this jug that's bouncing. Let's see what we got here. I just gonna go kind of separate my stock here, but that's another nice one. Come on, here, buddy. There we go. Yeah, another nice eater. Right there in that two to three pound range. Oh, yeah. Hooked right there in the corner of the mouth. Right like them circle hooks. Right like them circle hooks are good at. There he is. There's another one. 18, 20 incher. And right at about 20. There's another one. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, what was that? I ran through them. What is that? Two, four, six, two, four, five, six, eight. That's eight of them. Uh, eight of them, and I kind of just basically ran them all once. I mean, I picked up that one there, you know, on the way out. But uh, yeah, not not bad for 20 jugs. I'm in the right spot, uh, you know, which is, you know, you can. This is a big lake, and. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for a lot of years. I kind of know where to go, but uh, it's not that difficult to, uh, you know, just to kind of isolate areas whenever you got this many baits. So anyway, I'm gonna kind of move some stuff around uh, kind of by what I saw with the size of fish, the the bigger 
the bigger males, uh, you know, the bigger males still haven't really moved up super shallow. They're still kind of out in the center. So, uh, you know, I'm after the bigger fish, the little bigger fish. But I uh, like, like this fish here, guys. I want to show you this. So, a lot of people around here call this a blue catfish, and this is not right. This is a channel cat. This is a male channel cat, about ready to spawn. You can see he got big wide head. Let me uh. Let me compare them to a, a female here. You can see the head size is huge, huge difference, right? You got this big cone-shaped head. This is a channel cat. This is not a a blue cat. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people mistaken that. But uh, that's that's just a it's just a male channel cat uh, getting ready to spawn, right? Like no different than a, a white crappie whenever they get you know that real black color to them in the spring that's all it is so that's a good run i mean i'd be satisfied with that if i ran them once but uh, i can probably run them another another once or twice here before i gotta go home but yep go throw them out give me another cold beer a lot of action i don't have time to do my drinking so get them set out and go again so i went to go kind of shuffle stuff around and this jug here was going so I gave it a little five minutes or so to make sure he hooked himself real good. Looks to be a little better fish. He's really he's really going that taking that jug for a ride. Let's see what we got here. guys these are what I'm in here for not the giant ones shut that motor off for you guys it's got to be loud a little two-stroke oh come here buddy so anyway this is what I'm in here for that's three three uh, three pounds something like that just your cookie cutter what is he 20 that's a 24 23 24 inch fish so Yep, we're just in here with these jugs. Just got them running around. It. Just putting a hurting on the fish. There's that. Um, I'm gonna go shoot some more gar. I got like a half a dozen gar. I went and shot the first little check. Go shoot some more. Come back and run these guys again. There we go, guys. Got that gar. Not a bad gar. 27, 28 inches. Not a bad gar. And you can see that old crossbow poked right through them. Ooh, I might want to check the radar, guys. <laughs> I just looked up and it looks like it's going to rain. All right, guys, so I was hoping we could run these another couple of times, but uh, let me show you what I'm looking at. That is nasty. Um, that is a big spring storm. There's a lot of lightning and it goes way back and it just all popped up real quick. So uh, I'm gonna get wet, <laughs> but um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the big camera away. That way uh, it don't get ruined. Run through, pick every jug up real quick because uh, it's gonna rain now for the next few hours. Uh, it just blew up a big line. I'm gonna throw all the jugs in the boat, head to the ramp, get off the lake, get out of the lightning, and uh, if if the weather permits, I'll show you what I ended up with. But uh, I'm gonna run through them again. But I'm just I'm uh, kind of in getting it done mode here, so I apologize for that. Uh, I'm just ahead of them right now, so I'm just gonna go chuck them all in, get all of them in the boat, head for the ramp. All right, guys. So that was uh, that was a hell of a little storm there. Uh, So I ended up, I pulled 12 of the jugs before it started to hail and you can see behind me, it, that's a good little bit of storm. I got another one coming in, they're just all popping up. So I got 12, 12 jugs in, I caught four fish, three of them were keepers, one of them was real small. Coming up to one here that I saw bouncing, uh, I just ended up having to take cover under a tree and let the storm pass. 
it was hailing and it was lightning and I ain't all about that. Alright, so we're coming up to this jug here. It's bouncing around like it's got a fish on it. Let's see what we got here. Twenty-one, twenty-one inch or whatever, a couple pounds, you know. I got a pretty good pile of them in there, guys. I think I'm up to. Uh, I've definitely broke ten, but I'm not sure really. <laughs> that storm really uh, threw me for a loop. But I've got four more I got to pick up over there. One of them's deep in the bushes, so it may have a fish on it. All right, guys, last jug of the day. I've got my 19. I need one more for 20. Here it is. It's swimming away. I'm in a hurry because it's going to storm again. This one's definitely got a fish on it. And he took the jug a long way too, so we'll see. Let's hook him here and see. Hear the wind coming from that next storm. It's a good fish too. Come on, bring him in. Here we go, guys. That's the. Uh... Can you hear that wind, guys? <laughs> Here it comes. That's a good fish. That's six, seven pounder there. Come on, baby. Circle hook right in the corner of the mouth. There it is. That's a good fish there to end it on. That's a good fish. I don't know if that's 15 or not. I kind of lost track. That's kind of what I was shooting for, guys. Do I have you zoomed all the way out? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Good fish. Uh, that fish is about 24 inches long. So I think that's right about 15 fish, guys. Here comes the next big storm. <laughs> I'm gonna get the hell out of here. Or at least get back to the boat ramp. Cause that last storm had hail in it. All right guys, so let's rain pass again. It's rained on me now uh, three times. But anyway, it's passed enough now where I'm gonna be able to uh, clean these fish for you guys. So here's what I ended up with. Uh, I think there's 14 or 15 in here. I'm not 100% sure. I kind of lost track whenever the rain came and I was just throwing fish in. But, uh, you know, some good sized ones. Um, pretty good average for only running that uh, running that set of jugs. I basically ran it through twice, you know. I was only out here for, I don't know, roughly about three, three a little over three hours. So, uh, you know, not too awful bad. All right, so there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to clean a catfish. Um, and I stand by it that the fact that I would rather eat catfish over walleye, over crappie any day. I think it's uh, a more moist fish. I think it's a more flavorful fish. I think just everything about it in general tastes better. Um, now that being said, you know, it's all in the preparation. You can make a, a catfish taste like ass or you can make them taste good. And it's all, I believe, in the preparation. So anyway, I'm going to clean... Uh, clean one of these up for you guys clean a couple maybe um just kind of end the video here because i know it kind of ended kind of uh kind of sporadically out there on the lake with the rain and the lightning and everything but uh anyway i'll show you guys how i do it and uh, i assure you it is it's the best way to clean a catfish and get the most out of it uh you know the most flavor out of it so pretty simple anyway so i clean this fish up here for you guys and this is the best way. There's a lot of people that skin them and, you know, it just takes too much time. I've got, you know, 15 fish to clean. I'm going to do it here just in a couple of minutes. So on these channel cat, and these are channel cat, by the way. I want to emphasize that. These are channel cat, but for the most part, they're all the same. There is a yellow line of meat right here that ha it, it just does not taste good. It's 
It's where a lot of the different bad stuff in the fish, it where it all collects, it's yellow meat. Catfish also have a blood vein and red meat on them. You wanna get rid of both of those, right? So, you can worry about skinning them, you can do all these sorts of things, but if you take a knife and you come right in here, right above that dorsal, and come in at an angle, you miss that neck meat. So yes, you are missing a little bit, but that is solid yellow meat. I cut that away anyway. So I'll come in here, and you can see that's the start of the ribs right there. There's not enough meat on top of that in any way to worry about. Catfish have kind of a pointed rib on them anyway. So what I'll do is I'll come down and I'll just bounce right along the top of that ribs. You can see it can't go anymore. All it is is belly meat left right there. And I'll drop my knife right down to the spine. And this fish is big enough we'll just take the fillet off instead of flipping it. Um, normally, you know, you could just flip it. All right, so here's our side of our fillet. Now you guys can see that yellow meat right there. I'm gonna cut that away. And I know there's some people that can say, say you know, um, soak it in milk, soak it in uh, salt water, soak it in all sorts of stuff. But uh, let me get you guys better in the frame here. But I'm telling you right now, that and the red meat's where your bad taste comes from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna hold my knife right to the edge of my cutting board where I can get parallel, and I'm actually gonna hold high. And I'm gonna get rid of that red meat by holding my knife high. I'm not gonna run it just right against the skin. I'll hold it just a little bit high. You can see I just, I missed just a little bit spot right there. This knife is not really powerful enough to be doing this, but uh, anyway, there's the difference, and I hope you guys can see that. There's the red meat. That's where I held the knife high. So I wanna go ahead and I wanna take all that red meat off. That is no good. That is what will make your catfish taste like mud. That's what make your catfish taste like dirt. We wanna remove all that meat that we can. Now then, there's that yellow meat right along the spine. I wanna get rid of that, throw that away. That's no good. Now, we come down, you can see that's a nice clean fillet. Now on this fish, we're gonna come in here. This is all boneless, by the way. Now these, these catfish don't have hair bones in them. And we're gonna pull that vein right out of the center of that fish. That will be the mud vein. Different times of the year that mud vein will get uh, real heavy. This time of the year, spring, it's not so bad. Now, there's your good fillet of catfish right there. That's a nice fish that come off of what, probably a six or seven pound channel. Now, another thing whenever you fry these fish is don't try to fry that whole fillet. It's too big of a fillet. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take that fillet, cut it right down the spine, we're going to cut it into four pieces. Right there is some of the best eaten that you can get, guys, right there. Simple, quick, and easy. I'll do one more side for you, and I'll do it kind of a kind of normal speed, so to speak, but come in at the door, dorsal, Drop right down. Pull that fillet off. Come to the edge of your board. Ride that knife just a little high. Try to get that red meat off as best you can. I forgot my electric knife today. If I have, if I have my. Uh, my plug-in electric knife, it's a lot faster and it'll, it's easier to, uh, to run that red meat. Peel that yellow meat off. Now I know what's gonna end up, so I'm just gonna go ahead, cut all the way down. Cut that mud vein out of that fish.
Got them into four pieces. Right there, guys, is some of the best eating you'll ever have. Catfish. I'll eat that over crappie. I'll eat that over sauger. I'll eat that over walleye any day. Um, and it did not take any amount of time, guys. That The whole skinning a fish and doing it with skinners and... I don't know. It's just... There's no need for it. Skin your fish this way. And, uh, and you will have some of the... And you will have some of the best catfish you've ever eaten. I promise you. So anyway, guys, uh, I know this video is kind of all over the place a little bit with the weather. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope I got a video that some of you guys connected with. I'm struggling super, super hard to find videos that, that my subscribers are connecting with. So I'm really, really trying to... Uh, to connect with my viewers, connect with my audience here. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys would like to see. You gotta understand that summertime is fishing time, wintertime is hunting and trapping. So, uh, you know, that's that's what you're gonna get this time of year. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Um, like I said, leave that like button. This video hits a thousand likes. I'll make a video step-by-step -step on how to make those adjustable jugs. I'm telling you, they're the only way to go uh, as far as having a versatility in, in a jug and you can see obviously uh, the the results you know they produce great so anyway guys hope you enjoyed till next time be sure to subscribe if you're new leave a comment hit that like button till next time guys I appreciate it we'll see you then